Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Creative Live. Welcome back to Creative Live TV. I'm your host, Kenna Klosterman, coming to you from my home to yours. First of all, I want to make sure that everybody is safe and sound out there, and uh, we here, all of us here at Creative Live, are thinking of you. Uh, last week, we launched something called Creative Live TV, and we are here doing a live stream to help entertain, inspire, and connect you all. So if you're watching on creativelive.com slash TV, you can click on the chat icon up there and join the conversation. First of all, we want to know where it is that you are tuned in from, where you're joining us from. And uh, before I introduce our very special guest, Michelle Valberg, today, uh, I'm going to give some shout outs. Uh, so let's see, we've got France who's joining in, we've got Vita, uh, we've got Kent. Um, so again, uh, let us know where you're tuning in from. So like I said, uh, we have been bringing on a ton of guests um, for you guys out there, uh, whether that is live performances of uh, piano players, world-class cello players, uh, to uh, conversations with incredible entrepreneurs, and really just trying to highlight what people are out there doing during this time. So uh, Goran is, is tuning in from Slovenia. Awesome. Uh, so what I wanted to do was bring you an incredible photographer, Michelle Valberg. She's a Nikon ambassador. She is a Canadian geographic photographer. She travels all over the world, uh, mainly doing wildlife photography. She leads people on incredible adventures. And since I know that none of us can travel right now, we wanted to take you on some virtual travel because we can do that. Uh, so today, Michelle is going to take you from getting up close and personal with gorillas in Uganda. Uh, and we're going to head over to see some rarely seen coastal wolves in uh, British Columbia. Uh, but once again, our intention here is is to um, just bring you things uh, that can help uh, ease your mind during this time. And for me, travel is one of those things. Okay, one more shout out to Judy Akers, who said, watching from rural Alberta, Michelle Valberg is my hero. So yeah. <laughs> let's bring her on. Michelle Valberg, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Oh, First of all, you. I... First of all, I want to ask how you are doing uh, right now during this time. And I, and I do want to give your husband a very special shout out. Um, and you can tell us why, but he is definitely on the front line. And so how, how are you and your family doing? And where are you joining us from? Uh, I'm uh, in Ottawa, Canada, in my hometown. And uh, we're all good. We're all really good. Um, my husband is a fire chief, so he's been working the front lines, as you said. And... Uh, yeah, doing a great job and keeping the city safe and and uh, and they're just healthy right now, all of them. So let's just hope that that stays the course. Absolutely. Well, thank you to all of the frontline workers mm -hmm. all around the world. Um, again, I'm just blown away from people who are, you know, working at the grocery stores uh, to, of course, all the hospitals. And so um, it's a it's a very important time for um, to give you know, to give thanks to those people. Absolutely. They're all heroes. Yeah. Um, so, Michelle, once again, before we start going further on our trip, I want to let you know where people are tuning in from. We have Angel in Carretaro, Mexico. We have Ellen in Santa Fe. We have Sunny in Hong Kong. We have Klein all the way from South Africa. Uh, so it's super, super cool uh, to be able to bring people in and connect people. Once again, if you're watching on creativelive.com slash TV, where you can see all the live broadcasts that we're streaming to you 24-7, uh, you can join in the chat room there as well. Doing an okay, amazing so job at that too, um, by the way. Oh. Just so fantastic to see all this live TV. So thank you for bringing this to everybody. Yeah. Of course. Well, thank you. Okay, so where are you going to take us today? And just tell us a little bit about uh, you and your photography, your wildlife career. Uh, you've been photographing wildlife for 30 years. So tell us more about you for people who aren't familiar with you and your work. Well, I think I have the luckiest job in the world. 
or the best job in the world, and I'm the luckiest person in the world to have uh, photography as a career. And uh, these days I do a lot of travel, a lot of adventure, a lot of teaching workshops in the field and um, being able to visit these amazing, wonderful places. Um, yeah, I, I have a part-time studio that I work in here in Ottawa as well. Um, yeah, I'm just so fortunate to be able to do what I love every day. And uh, yeah, in January, um, end of January uh, and early February, I was able to um, go and visit Africa and go to Tanzania with my family. Um, my husband and I had gone to Kenya and South Africa about 13 years ago. And when we visited and we landed in the Maasai Mara, we said, okay, this is what we're going to do with our son. We are going to bring him to Africa and we're going to save our, our dollars and we're going to make sure that he has that experience. It was one of those things, life-changing, and it was something that we wanted to share with Ben. So uh, 13 years later, we had started planning this trip a number of months prior. Uh, had a great group of people to join in and uh, we were able to experience Tanzania and Uganda before um, our world changed. It's so incredibly fortunate because there are a lot of people that are on the fence. I was supposed to return to Africa in June and that is off the, off the, off the calendar now, of course. And uh, yeah, so just uh, I wanted to, we were talking about what we uh, uh, could bring to your audience and um, I just, I've been so immersed in all the images. It's unbelievable that I actually have the time to spend on, uh, on the last couple of trips that I've done. Usually we're on to the next or, you know, we're busy in the day and moving forward and not being able to really go back and, uh, you know, go deep into the images. So, um, I just love to share and, and I hope we can take everybody on a little journey to Africa. If you've been you'll recognize the animals and the, and uh, and maybe some of the scenes. And if you are thinking of going or want to go, then hopefully this inspires you to, to make that dream happen. Absolutely, Michelle. And, and sort of my concept here was that, you know, you speak at major photography conferences and, you know, all kinds of places. And a lot of that is just, is, is storytelling. Mm -hmm. And, and so, I wanted to bring that virtually to to people as well as just the images, but the stories behind them. So let's go. Let's go to Tanzania and and take us, you know, talk about this experience and your first image with this beautiful lion. <laughs> I had been to Tanzania two years prior with Adventure Canada and Thompson Safaris and um this time around, you know, it was so incredibly different because it had had, um, Tanzania and Africa had experienced massive amount of rain. Um, it had rained, I think, every day since October, and it stopped raining the day before we arrived, if you can believe it. Um, so it made everything very, very different uh, scenic-wise. The, the grasses were um, a lot higher than they were um, the, the previous time that we visited. Uh, so it made spotting the cats in the grass very difficult. So with this lion, uh, we were driving around this rock uh, and we had felt that the lions were probably there. We were in the middle of the wildebeest migration. It was their hotspot is where they would go. Obviously, it was middle of the day. Well, it wasn't obvious, but we were middle of the day. So they're most times sleeping. And uh, it wasn't until our guy just saw a little teeny tiny part of the lion's hair flying in the wind just above the, the grass and he stopped and um, I think we had to wait a good at least 45 minutes an hour for the lion to actually pop its head up just seeing a little bit of that um, of that hair flying in the in the wind amongst the grass it was like come on come on come on and uh, he just lifted his head he looked at us and it was there for I think that moment lasted about 10 seconds and then he went flat right back down into the, into the grass. So absolute uh, fantastic opportunity, but man, did it ever take some time to make it all happen. Isn't that the case though with, um, with photo safaris or safari is so much patience, uh, which of course is, is something that we all are learning to manage <laughs> in, in this moment. In right. this moment as well. Yeah. So what was it like then to experience, I know this next image uh, with the giraffes, uh, you 
I remember you saying something like it was the first time you saw them necking. What does that mean? <laughs> we came across these two giraffes that um, they were males and one was slightly smaller than the other one and they're fighting uh, almost like when you see the polar bears sparring and the one smaller one would just take full force his head one side to the other and just knock this giraffe into the neck and, and they would wrap themselves around it was this beautiful dance um, it didn't really I should a, a very um, a, a, a tango let's just say <laughs> it wasn't exactly a soft dance uh, incredible to see um, that was so exciting and of course every time you go on these um, expeditions um, you just you're hopeful for any type of behavior and when you're able to see something you haven't seen before it was really super special and cool I did some slow motion with it as well with my with my z6 and i was shooting with the 800 millimeters so um you know we had the bean bag on top of the on top of the vehicle and uh so really neat to see it in slow motion and see that impact that that um, that one giraffe had on the other super neat it's so cool just to see the giraffes and and just to see how they, like you said, interact with each other, but how they eat. And um, is it is it hard to conceptualize how to take different types of images? Like you get on safari and the first thing you want to do is photograph every, every animal that you see. Uh, mm. But then you kind of have to get a little bit more into it or unique, you know, how to create unique images while, while, while on safari. And part of wildlife photography and becoming a better wildlife photographer is really taking the opportunity that you have right in front of you at that point. Like you want, you don't know how long it's going to last, right? So you want to make sure that you capture whatever you can in the moment that you have. And then if you are able to experience it a little bit longer, then just making sure that you're watching and, and anticipating the behavior. And um, and that really helps as well to, to make sure that you're creating that emotional impact or that you're creating that moment or capturing that moment you haven't seen before. So yeah, the first zebras, right? The first zebras you see, it's just like click, 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 click. And then the first uh, wildebeest, click, 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 click. And then, you know, the next day it's just like, oh yeah, there's a zebra or, you know, yeah, there's more wildebeest. And, and, um, and then you start to really see, okay, and then maybe it's a, it's a it's a baby and and then you're trying to see behavior between the mom and the and the baby and you know so it's really just being patient with that as well and not trying to just capture um or just photograph like do you just don't want to take a picture you want to create a picture and uh and that's so hard to do when you're super excited and and um in the moment and and you don't know how long it's going to last right so you want to make sure that you capture something but then when you can really work your way into it, then you can start to really create some magic. Like we did. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I traveled, I had the great fortune to uh, be able to travel with Michelle. It's almost been a year since we took our trip yeah. to to Jasper uh, and Robson National Parks up in Canada. It was my first time in that area. And I learned so much by being in the field directly with you, which was phenomenal but yeah I that was I'm new to wildlife photography uh, but just you know being there next to you and like taking in all the the tips and how and the joy of the experience uh, we were looking for bears you know or and moose and you know all kinds of mountain goats and all kinds of things uh, and so it's yeah you do work it requires a lot of patience mm -hmm. um Let's go back to Tanzania and talk to me about hippos. Like I didn't realize how dangerous hippos are mm -hmm. it, until I kind of was on safari myself. Mm -hmm. And I think there's more death by hippo than any other animal. Um, so yeah, very, very, um, very dangerous animals. Most times you see them in the water. Uh, again, with Tanzania this year, with the water level so higher, so much higher we weren't able to go into the hippo pool or go in go see the hippo pool that we had seen the, the year before so it made um, that experience a little bit different we weren't able to get as close um, but again just you know they're so charismatic and and so beautifully ugly and um, you know their eyes and the way that they interact with each other and you can see a lot of them you can see singles you can see babies um, and again it's just you know creating that interaction 
and uh, and waiting for it to happen and and hoping that you're on the right too that it's going to be especially when you're over here and then all of a sudden you hear them fighting over here and then you're over here but then they're over here and then you're over there you know so just making sure that um, that you're patient and that you stay on the choice that you make as well sometimes you know when you go off of it and you turn over to something else that's caught your attention or your eye um, you lose what opportunity you might have had right in front of you. So again, you know, we can say this over and over again, it's the patience and it's the anticipation, it's the, the patience and, and waiting. So especially with hippos, they're just, they're under the water for a little bit of time. Of course, they're not swimming, they're walking on the bottom of the, of the, um, of the riverbed. And then when they come back up, you know, just waiting for maybe them to blow the bubble or to have that interaction with that other male that might be in, in dominance. So yeah, they, it was so much fun to watch the hippos. They're just incredible creatures. And I know that you then have uh, images of of elephants, which to me are the wisest creatures, some of the wisest creatures yeah. on, on this planet. Um, how do you approach photographing and interacting with with elephants, where are you in in Tan Tanzania? I think is now I'm remembering. That's how they say it there, right? <laughs> I know some of them do and some of them don't. And then you start saying Tanzania, and then they look at you, and then you're like Tanzania. We say I say Tanzania. So do um, I. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. It was uh, in this particular um, time we were we were driving on the road and. We saw a herd that was under the trees and it was beautiful light and there were little babies. Again, the grass is high, so it was hard to get a good glimpse of the of the smaller ones. Um, and it was just such a beautiful setting under an acacia tree. And um, so, of course, I had my longer lens on at that point. And I typically have three cameras working with me and I have the super long, like the 800 millimeter. I might have the 500 millimeter PF and then I'll have the 70 to 200 or even the 2470. And uh, it's really important because you never know uh, if they're going to approach or not. And when they do, sometimes having a super long lens, it's really cool to be able to zoom in on the eye or onto the skin or create some different kind of imagery than the full on, you know, getting the full body. So uh, we were watching um, this herd and then all of a sudden, 20 of them, just if not more, just started walking right towards our vehicle. And... Uh, it was almost, you couldn't believe that it was happening. And they're so, as you said, incredibly beautiful and, and graceful and, and wise and, and just so majestic. And uh, they all just calmly walked right towards us. And then you started to see the little babies appear and then the trunks from the older ones would go on top of the baby. And so you started to see all this beautiful interaction. And then they just crossed the road. They all surrounded us and then walked right beside us and just started eating um, grass right right next to our our, our vehicle. And uh, at that point, obviously, uh, 800 millimeter, not quite the lens to use. And uh, and then it became the 2470 that I was able to to photograph them right beside the vehicle. And then again, switching off, you know, do you do video? Do you do do you do stills and and battling that? You know, uh, wondering what you should be doing because of you know when they're when they're eating and and they're you know you're experiencing that kind of behavior. So much of it I want to capture on video, but at the same time I'm you know, wanting to do it in the photography side as well. So yeah, it was an incredible experience. And for Ben, I, I have this photo of him uh, with his with his iPhone taking a picture of the elephant right beside him. So um, what an incredible opportunity. And to be there with your family, like you said. Yeah, super um, special and a wonderful group of people. Like we just, we enjoyed each other's company and, and it was just such a, a wonderful way to, uh, to experience Tanzania. <laughs> awesome. Uh, let's keep going. Let's keep traveling. Um, take us, let's see, I think uh, your next image is, talk to us about hippos out of the water. Right. So when we were in Tanzania, uh, one of my guests, uh, Michelle, who says, so do you ever see hippos out of the water? And, uh, and I'm like, oh, only at night they come out and graze. It's very rare that you see um, the hippos out of the water during the day. Um, you know, they're in the water, they're, they're with the sunburn, that sort of thing. So um, we, uh, 
I had seen a couple of hippos out of the water in Tanzania, but from a very far distance, and it wasn't for very long. So off we go to Uganda, and the group switched a little bit. So a few people, including my family, unfortunately, didn't come to Uganda, and a few people arrived with us uh, that were different. So um, some of us transitioned from Tanzania to Uganda, and a few people joined us. And um, we're driving along the road, and we just landed in Uganda. We were going to our, our lodge, and... Um, and we stopped to look at this bird. And then our guide said, turn to your left. And just behind our shoulders was this big, massive hippo on the side of the road eating grass. And uh, there's road right there, and there's cars zooming past. And uh, we're looking at this hippo going, where, where, where's the water? And what's he doing alone? And there's a man walking towards him. So we start flagging the man to tell him that there was a hippo there. And uh, so all this was going on, and I said to the guy, well, will the hippo go on the road? Because um, of all the traffic, like, what, that's not going to be good. Imagine hitting a hippo, or you don't want that to happen. And uh, he goes, no, they never go on the road. Yeah, they'll be, he won't go on the road. And then sure enough, like five minutes later, do, 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 the hippo crosses the road and just walks down and starts walking directly to these people. <laughs> and they're just standing there watching him. It was like nobody could believe that we were seeing this. And then the hippo, just before, um, he drank a little bit of water on the road and then turned left and went into the water that was just below, which we didn't know that it was sitting right there. So anyway, it was incredible. It was hysterical just because, oh, no, you never see hippos out of the water. And then, no, you don't see them on the road. And the next thing you know, this hippo's walking down the road. It was pretty neat. It was pretty neat. <laughs> Our, I mean, that's the thing with with wildlife photography you get so many unexpected moments um and then like you said you're prepared to to capture them but then i mean my gosh safety first as well <laughs> safety first and you're not always well prepared either because they it, you know these experiences happen <clears throat> when you least expect them a lot of times so you know it's uh sometimes you're able to capture it and sometimes you're not we all know that in wildlife photography you don't always have any guarantee. I think Ron McGill says the only thing predictable about wildlife is their unpredictability, right? Yep. Yep. The only constant in life is change, right? <laughs> that right. as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So let's keep going and uh, taking people to Uganda. When you're when you're in Uganda, uh, what is it that? What else are you looking for seeing? Uh, well, the Uganda trip was primarily to see the gorillas. That was the main focus and the chimps. Um, what we were so beautifully surprised about was all the other activity that we were able to see, even en route through Queen Elizabeth Park. Um, we were able to see a beautiful mom and cub leopard um, in the field hunting, um, it was just magnificent. We saw a, a lion, um, a lion who had just eaten um, a wildebeest, and you know we saw the uh, the pride. And uh, so it was just it was magic, really. Um, the elephant herds again. Um, we saw tons of hippos. Um, but for me, and our our podcast that we did a, a year ago, I guess. It was a year ago already. That's crazy uh, to think. Um, you said, where is one place that you want to go? And for me, it was Uganda, and it was to see the mountain girls. So this opportunity came up, and it was a lifelong dream to see both of these species. So uh, the, the, the route en route to our, our, our Kaimboro Lodge, we were able to see all this other wildlife. Um, when we landed, one of the things that I had known from being a small child and going into high elevations is that I'm not really good in elevations. <laughs> um, I'm okay on a cruise ship, and I don't get seasick. But men put me in altitude, and I, I, my body seems to do this reverse, I don't know, I don't like this, get me out of here. Um, so by the time we had landed at, at our lodge, I was huge headache and um, I was feeling unwell and basically spent the entire time that I was there um, not able to eat and just really feeling crappy. <laughs> it was awful. So that made that made everything a big challenge as well, right? Because you're not only battling, um, you know, 
high intensity shoot, but also not feeling well at the same time. Um, so our first day which, was with the, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, which by the way, adding that you're, you are leading a group of people, uh, on yeah. this, on this uh, expedition. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. so, you know, again, yeah. like dream, dream place. And then you got to deal with the reality of things that come your way. Yeah. Yeah. And fortunately everyone took a very good care of me. Um, you know, I had a wonderful group that were, uh, incredibly helpful and, um, very, um, aware of my, of my situation. And, um, yeah, they were fantastic and I couldn't have done it without them. And I also couldn't have done the, the gorillas without the porters as well. Um, but we'll get into to get it will get into that and it was interesting because when we did the first chim uh track that was when i was i was quite ill from the night before and uh when we were doing uh the track we had two people that joined us and we didn't know them and he kept looking at me and uh he finally said are you okay i'm like yeah 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 i just i'm, I'm just not really good in altitude and uh so we had climbed these hills and it's not like they were very you know, steep hills or anything, but we were in high altitude and, and I just, you know, I hyperventilate. <laughs> it's really, it's really pathetic. But anyway, um, so finally he looked at me, he goes, okay, you're not all right. You know, and then they started feeding me water and then they started giving me these high intensity fruit bars and, and everyone was, um, you know, looking after me because I thought at the, after the experience with the, with the chimps, I thought I was going to pass out. <laughs> Because there we are, we're chasing the chimps, not we weren't chasing the chimps, but we we're moving with the chimps. Um, so yeah, it was it was highly intense. The adrenaline was just shooting. Everything went out. I, I was I didn't even realize, you know, that an hour had passed. And um, yeah, it wasn't until it was all over that, you know, everything just kind of settled and I was just like, oh no, this isn't good. This isn't good. Talk to me about the adrenaline. Uh the uh, the adrenaline of being there with these with chimps uh, and then we'll go into gorillas as well but I mean what an experience yeah I, I think um, you know when you have a dream and you, and you think about it and and you try to imagine the experience um, and then actually experiencing it it's all so so surreal. Um, that you're that you're there and that you're you know meters away from these extraordinary animals that you have dreamt about seeing um, yeah and um, and just not knowing what to expect either I think the next time obviously it would feel a little bit differently but every time you do something the first time you know just not knowing um, what to do if the chimp came towards us, which he did. And he brushed right past a number of us and, and me as well. And uh, fortunately, our guide is there uh, to walk you through it. And he just don't, don't move, don't move. So clearly, kind of like with bears or, you know, any other animal, you don't want to all of a sudden be, you know, pointing your camera or moving or making sudden moves to spook them. Um, yeah, so your your my heart was just racing um, from the excitement, from um, the the wonder and the awe of being able to to experience something like this, um, especially a dream come true. You know, it's just it's extra special. Well, I want to give a, a shout out, Michelle, to Michael Sangster, who is tuning in on Facebook and saying, this is incredible. I'm sad I missed that trip. Um, yeah, which is, there you, you go. Know, which, is, <laughs> uh, which is, you know, yeah. why we are here, um, allowing you to come along um, with Michelle on virtual travel. If you guys are just tuning in, again, we're here on Creative Live TV, creativelive.com slash TV. You can join the chat in there. We We've got Nick in there and Yearn from Denmark, uh, and um, we are bringing you um, amazing folks from all around the world, from our living rooms to their living rooms to, to, to your home, wherever you are. So, uh, Michelle, I know that you made a video for us, a really short video, uh, but explain where we're going to, where we're going to go as we, as we move to your experience with the gorillas? Well, we went to Bwindi in Pendrafoto Forest um, 
to see the uh, the gorillas. And again, um, it was just so the adrenaline, the the excitement, um, being able to experience this, knowing that we had uh, likely um, a, a a good hike. Um, we <laughs> we had a we had I guess a, a close to a three hour hike up to a close to 9,500 feet. And um, so I was struggling a little bit uh, with my breathing, um, but I had a great a porter, both tracks that we had. Uh, our first day in particular, the uh, gorilla family kept moving um, on from where we were. So we just had to keep going towards them. And uh, it was uh, pretty challenging for me and uh, for all of us, I think, in some way or another, um, you know, the, the steps you had to take walking through um, the forest that was cut down, making sure your footing is right all the time. And uh, again, just having that porter to hang on to was so incredibly important. And they, he also carried my camera for me as well. So I made a little video to start this whole um, story and I wanted to show um, just a little bit of the video. I, it was a tough shoot. It was one of the toughest shoots I've ever done, um, but it was I, something really important for me to do to try to capture the animals in motion. And uh, you don't always know when you're filming if you're gonna get that right moment or not, or you question whether you should be doing photos instead. But I wanted to share with everyone just a 38 second video of uh, some of the images that I took and also uh, the video of uh, some of the interaction we had. Wow. Just uh, seeing them, the moving is so different uh, than, than seeing just the still images as well. Thank you for putting that together. It just, oh. it does, it takes you there. It takes you there. So tell us more about the experience um, and what you're doing. I mean, I, you know, you say the word mountain gorillas and like I never put two and two together that you're actually like trekking up into the mountains to see said mountain gorillas. <laughs> so describe uh, more of take people on the journey. Uh, so our group of eight, uh, we were joined by each of us had a porter and uh, you have a walking stick and you have your pants stuck into your socks. You have your hiking shoes. You have every layer imaginable because you might be starting early in the morning and then it might be cool and then might be hot. You have all your rain gear. Um, you have uh, insect repellent. You have everything imaginable that you could use in changing climate um, and tons of water, whatever whatever amounts of water that you could take, you had to have as much water as possible. For me, especially, um, there wasn't, there, I think I went through all of my water and then people started to give me their water <laughs> at the end. And uh, yeah, you just, you, you're following the, the ranger, you have a guard in front and behind because of the uh, forest elephants, because of um, maybe a, a family or um, a mountain gorilla that hasn't been habituated and they don't know. So you have a guard in front and behind. Um, you're well looked after. You're never, you never feel like you're in danger. And you're just anticipating and waiting for them to hear the calls of, of the gorillas so you know you're close. And every time we got close, we got further away <laughs> because they moved as we moved. And uh, it was okay, it wasn't raining when uh, we were walking through the, the, the forest. And then uh, about 
five minutes before you could hear um, the the thunder start to roll, uh, five minutes before seeing the family. And uh, so we're approaching. I haven't gotten my camera out of my bag yet. My uh, my cape, uh, I had a poncho over top of my, my bag. Um, but I hadn't taken my camera out yet, which I was only using the 70 to 200. Now we've got extremely low light, um, like really low light. We're not only in the forest, now it's, now it's just going to torrential rain any moment. The thunder's happening, the family's right there, um, and they're like, go, you know, countdown is on, one hour. And you're not to be within seven meters. Um, and it's dark and you're trying to figure out, you're, you're making sure that your camera's covered. Um, fortunately, my friend Chris was there to help me take my camera out using the poncho to, to cover. Um, it was just insane. Like there were so many things happening at the same time and you knew, and when you only have an hour, um, I don't like thunderstorms either. So here I am in altitude and I'm, I'm uh, finally at my dream with the gorillas and a torrential downpour with a thunderstorm happening. And uh, yeah, so it just, everything, you just scrambled and we were lying in the mud and, and uh, uh, the silverback was to our left and he was sitting there with his arm up and just his head down. And then uh, we had a blackback that, that really showed us um, himself. He was the one that was lying on the ground. Um, he was also picking his nose. He was making his bed. We had uh, the family under the tree, but it's super dark. Um, so ISO, you know, working your camera, making sure that your lens was dry, that your camera was dry. Um, you know, uh, rain was going into the, into the viewfinder. You're trying to create, you're trying to see if you've got the eye in focus. You can't now because you've got raindrops and you're so then, fortunately, with the mirrorless, I have uh, focus peaking. So, but I had it on blue, and it wasn't light enough. And you know, it, it, and then I had to go to 2.8 because I was already at 5,000 ISO or 10,000. I can't remember now. I was high. Uh, you didn't want too low of a shutter speed. Um, yeah. So work in your camera. You're working the subject. You're working. To make sure that you're staying dry. That your camera's staying dry. That you're able to create. Then fogging issues happened the next day. It wasn't even raining, but you know, the heat and the humidity, all of a sudden you're photographing the gorillas and you're there and you have an hour and your camera's fogging. Um, fortunately, uh, one of um, uh, Bridget was the one who took her, her lens off of the camera and um, cleaned the top of the lens from inside because it wasn't on the outside, the condensation was on the inside. So now you're opening up your camera <laughs> in the rainforest with uh, things flying around and then you're trying to defog your camera or your lens and then put it back on and then create and then uh, so much movement and then you have the trees. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty much summing up uh, a wild, truly wild, experience and within all that though you you create these beautiful images where where you do connect with these creatures um beautiful so much like us when you look at how yeah. their gestures are and and yeah. uh, and so so within all that you kind of find this um connections tell me yeah. about tell me about that well I, before I had gone I had a dream that um the a silverback came over and sat down next to me and put his arm around me and I couldn't take a photo for the entire time because I had the silverback with his arm around me and uh so when we were looking at this blackback who was making his bed and and picking his nose and and rubbing on the ground um and just yeah seeing so much of us in in them um, and trying to make sure that you're absorbing all that too. You know, I put my camera down and as much as, you know, I don't ever think that the camera's in the way of me and my subject, it actually brings me closer because it's mine. And, and I think I see closer. I think I see more looking through my viewfinder. I just wanted to, I, for the first time, I really just wanted to put my camera down and just have that connection with a black back. And, uh, I think all of us felt that way, you know, that he was staring into our souls and uh, and we were we were seeing us, you know, and um, and again, you know, realizing the the true gift of of this experience. 
And then, uh, and then he got up and he walked straight towards me. And I'm thinking, oh, he's going to come and sit down next to me. I know it. He's going to come and sit next to me. I know it. This is going to be awesome. And uh, anyway, he just kept going. He walked right beside me. He walked right beside the rest of us and then went to my friend Chris, who had just turned her body slightly to him, and he just gave her a shove into her back. <laughs> and so she went forward. It totally took her by surprise. The ranger's behind, and he's like, it's okay, it's okay. But Chris was standing there going, okay, I don't know what to do. Is he going to come back again? Or like, Because her back is now to him. So she didn't realize that he had actually started to walk away and that he just wanted to say, hey, I'm here. This is my territory. And uh, so she she was like, oh, okay, what do I do? And then she realized that he had walked away and turned around and, and saw him um, from behind uh, walking. And then she just bawled like a baby like she just broke down in tears because she was so I was touched by a gorilla and it was amazing and of course the porters are all looking up thinking that the that the gorilla may have hurt her and she because she was crying but she was just so in um awe of being touched by this gorilla and just having that experience that that shocked her it was it was incredible uh and yeah and just uh, you know the eyes that was that was what it was all about but so not easy to see their eyes in this darkness um and i was glad i it's not a, a shoot that i walked away with a hundred amazing images but the ones that i got i'm really really happy with well so beautiful and and so, again like being able to see those eyes is for me like that's that soul connection what would you say to anybody who is interested in Maybe not right now, but planning for this type of adventure. If you could do it, I would say it is at the top of my top of my list of, of recommendations for sure. Um, making sure that you travel. I travel with Volcano Safaris. Um, they were amazing guides. Were we were well looked after from beginning to and and that's really important as well. And and uh, you know don't be afraid to take a porter if you do have this experience. Um, they're there to help you, guide you. Um, you know, even on the way back, if you can imagine with all the mud um, we had experienced because of the rains, the rains just pummeled down. So everything we had walked down, we had to walk back up, but in mud. Uh, at one point, I had my porter in front of me take my hand, and then I had the porter who was helping the woman behind me, um, behind me, pushing my butt up. So I had like this pull-push thing going on, and I was taking it. I, I had no problems in saying, okay, thanks, because if you look down to your left, it's, it's, you're, you're done, you know? Like you had to be so careful. Um, so I, if, you're, if you're able and, and you ha have the opportunity, I would say it is one of the most incredibly special um, experiences to ever have. And... While they're there, while, while we have this uh, wonderful opportunity to take it. Thank you. And we Thank have you. to go, Missy. You uh, and I, I know, I know. We were so close last year to going I know. Together. It's definitely on my bucket list. Um, so thank you for taking us there. I want to now sort of go to another part of the world with you uh, and, and kind of explain to everybody that this was a, your last travel right before everything got shut down. So mm -hmm. um, tell us where we're going to go now and let's let's get into some of those images. Uh, well, I had uh, planned on um, going to the Herring Run or the Herring Spawn in uh, the Great Bear Rainforest in British Columbia. Uh, the timing was such that I couldn't go any later because of March break and I wanted to be home with Ben. Um, it was, I couldn't go earlier because of Africa. So I had this small window of six days to, to head out and before heading out, the virus hadn't, um, uh, COVID hasn't really, um, hit us, um, hard. It had hit Seattle. Um, uh, but it, it wasn't enough to say it's too dangerous to go, especially where we were going. We were going to be out in the middle of, um, of nowhere <laughs> in the most majestic, beautiful places in the entire world as well. Um, so my buddy, uh, James, who is a, um, an amazing drone 
uh, operator, videographer, cinematographer, photographer uh, was also coming. And um, yeah, so we really wanted to go out and document the herring spawn and knowing that the herring spawn uh, attracts all kinds of different um, uh, animals uh, and mammals like, you know, the uh, gray whales, the black bears, the coastal wolves, birds, eagles. So, um, but I didn't really know what to expect because we could also go out there and not see a uh, herring spawn at all. Uh, you know, you, you, you book it and you have six days, uh, whether you're going to see it or not, you have no idea. And, uh, it was the most incredible experience. I don't know. Have you shown the photo from the drone yet of, of the herring spawn? If he has not, he will show it now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. I can't tell if, uh, if you're showing it or not, I'm my apologies, but, um, this was a drone shot um, from James operating the drone, and I actually pressed the shutter. Um, and uh, you could see uh, the spawning happening by the, the white uh, and the very green colors in, in the water. And we were actually told by um, a plane that was flying over us that the spawn was happening not far away from us on our first day. And uh, so we went over, and um, there were... There were gray whales, um, there were birds everywhere, there were surf scoters, there were eagles in every tree, um, there were sea lions and sea otters around. It was just this mecca of, of uh, unbelievable biodiversity happening right before us. It was incredible. So talk to us about the biodiversity in, in this part, you know, of part of the world and is it changing? Do we, um, what do we know about the herring the run? Yeah. The herring run in this area that we were in, they closed down the commercial, um, fishing in 2015. So it is coming back. Um, I think, uh, they were saying that there's 20,000 eggs laid by minimum 20,000 could go up to 200,000 eggs per, per herring. If you can imagine and um, the males actually go in and uh, spread their sperm. Then the females will go in and, and lay their eggs, which is kind of a, a reverse. Um, so uh, there's a lot of animals that feed. And the, the row, I, I included a photo of the row as well. Um, just the, the row is everywhere. It, it attaches itself to the kelp, to the rocks, uh, to all the surfaces around um, where the where the spawn's happening. So there's all kinds of uh, bird activity and the sea lions are, are plentiful and uh, so happy to be to be feeding. I mean just to see them all upside down and, and in their in their um, um, what do you call it they're a colony uh, uh, oh my goodness I'm not, the sure. Word? I'm not sure is it a raft? Um, yeah, so it was uh, that part was incredible to see, and that was something that I had gone out in particular to uh, to document and to uh, experience. So that was super super special. But to to see all this other behavior from the sea lions on the rocks with the beautiful, you know, the snow had just fallen on the mountains behind. Um, seeing the sea otters and, and their babies and, and the interaction um, that goes on and how incredibly cute they are, right? We would, you had said that when you had seen the, the photos. Um, but I, we, were in a, we were in a small boat and, and I did have the 800 millimeter on. At times I had the two times extender on. Um, so there were a lot of, um, a lot of duds in my, in my collection <laughs> that I had to go through. If you can imagine, you know, on a moving boat and with a, uh, with an 800 millimeter and moving subjects, there are a lot of, there are a lot of missed images, I have to tell you, but, um, the ones that I did get, I'm, I'm super, super happy about. Fantastic. I mean, I, I just, I, I, I am looking at sort of these images as we are going through them on my computer and the, the sea otters just, like I said, they just make okay. me smile. 
<laughs> which is the joy of the natural world. Yeah. And so let's talk about Coastal Wolves uh, as sort of the last place we're going to go on this virtual tour uh, with folks. And how rare is it to see coastal wolves in this area? Um, it's not easy by any means. Um, they're elusive. Uh, you know, I know Paul Nicklin had posted that he spent 90 days um, trying to photograph the coastal wolves. And out of those 90 days, maybe 10, he had interactions. Uh, I didn't really um, know. Uh, obviously, it was my dream. I haven't seen coastal wolves before. I've spent time in the Great Bear Rainforest and have never seen a wolf. Um, so for me to see a coastal wolf, that would be on the top of my list of, oh, that would be like creme de creme, especially coming back from seeing seeing the gorillas. Also, uh, a dream come true. And um, and so the first day we were in the cabin and, and Louise, who was um, part of our team, she said, uh, oh, there's a wolf on the island. And this is when you said you're prepared as much as you can be. We hadn't really prepared to act in a second. Um, we had most of our equipment ready, but we weren't fully ready to go to say, to be honest. Anyway, we just, we bolted and uh, um, we were able to come down this estuary that we were able to see where the wolves were. And there were two that actually crossed the island and swam. And uh, this is our first sighting. And, you know, we were pretty much, uh, we were at quite a distance. I was certainly glad that I had the 800 millimeter. Um, but just to watch them walk into the water and swim across, well, what they were doing is reuniting with their pack. So the other ones had come down to the, to the shoreline to greet them and they started playing with each other. And, uh, and then all of a sudden one walked off, stood on a rock, came closer to us and just howled at us for a good minute. What is that? It was we, we duh, like looking at a looking at a gorilla uh, in the eyes, and I, I you know all of a sudden now we've got this this uh, wolf howling. It was incredible. It was uh, just yeah. What do I say? It's so hard to believe. I think this was a month ago, you know, before the world the, before the world changed, and and forever grateful will I be to have had these experiences before and it's nice thank you for letting me go back into these moments and experiences because you know i we we arrived home on march 13th and uh, our world changed here and i've been in self-isolation ever since and uh wow it's just it's such a it's such a change you know and we can never take anything for for granted i certainly never will and i tried to never before but now just when you have an opportunity um remember to take it I think that's, like you said, the the truly important lesson, um, one of the important lessons in in all of this. And I can imagine that m more than many people, since traveling is your career essentially, mm -hmm. uh, that what are you what are you focused on now? I mean, kind of we, we're talking to a lot of people who are figuring out ways to. You know, to what what do you do in the midst of a time when you have to pivot or adjust to what you are doing as a professional photographer? That's such a good question, and so many different uh, photographers out there giving giving great advice. And I think um, you know, with my team here at Westboro Studio, we're we're talking all the time, and and I think it's just so important to to just work um, in. Uh, working on your business instead of in your business, as Cliff uh, Mountner said, um, and just really focus on on uh, what, and looking ahead, what and where will we be when we come out of this and being prepared. And now we've been um, gifted uh, time to spend on our imagery, on our learning, everything that we never had time before. We were so busy doing this and that and coming home and being with family or you know, being committed to so many different things. And now we have the opportunity to learn. And that's why I love what um, this, you know, Creative Live TV um, uh, is all about. You're, you're offering people this chance to further their careers, give them opportunity to hear from amazing people, amazing photographers, amazing artists of all, of all kinds, and just to be inspired. And, um, 
yeah, just trying to stay as positive as, as we can be and try to understand and see. And I don't know, like, how do you look ahead? How do we know what's, what's ahead? I just know that for the next six months, my travel, uh, all my opportunities, all my speaking engagements, everything is, is um, now off the table. So how best I stay positive and, and work on my career as best as I can when you have the time to do it. And it includes going out in your backyard and trying different things. Like I did this multiple exposure. I never used to do multiple exposures. Now I can do it. So I go out. We had this beautiful snowstorm. Well, it wasn't a storm. It was just really heavy snowflakes coming down. So I ran out my back door and just tried to find something to photograph. I wanted to photograph birds, but they seemed to all disappear. So I just found some water droplets on a tree limb. You know, so just try and see and look and, and be creative as much as you can. So your mind and your and your heart stays within, you know, the beautiful career or the opportunities or the, you know, the hobbies that, that we love. Just take the opportunity to learn and and grow. Yeah, that's I think there's to do. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's beautiful. I love that you went out and like you said, tried some new mm. um, things that you that your camera can do that you know maybe new styles or new things like the multiple exposures that you didn't necessarily do before and I know when I so I had you on the as a guest on the we are photographers podcast here on creative live and and I know you talk about again just being able to find nature in your backyard uh, and the little it can be the little things you know, it doesn't have to be the gorillas uh, in Uganda all the way across the world. And I'm that's my hope. That's what I'm trying to focus on right now is just finding those little nuggets. things that mm. the little nuggets. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I, many I, that, we, that we pass by, we don't pay attention to and we never typically have the time to, you know, now we have it. So find those nuggets. <laughs> it's funny because I keep saying yep, this is the time I'm going to sit down and go through and edit a whole bunch of photos from past trips that uh, have been sitting there, you know, for, for a long time. Like you said, well, I'm, I'm really bad with, <laughs> with that, <laughs> but I have yet to do it. It's like, you know, you keep finding other things. Um, but it's, it is, it's a, it is a time for um, reflection, and I just am so grateful that you're able to take us on a trip. I want to give a shout out to Julie, who is uh, tuning in and commented. Uh, she loves that the sentiment of we were gifted time, and uh, says, hands down, this is the best trip I have taken in 2020. <laughs> 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 she says, I hope to do it in person one day, but we're, yes, we're so glad, too. Julie, that, that you could do that and travel with us. Michelle, I want to make sure that everybody knows where they can follow you. Again, like I said, Michelle has been on We Are Photographers. You can subscribe to that podcast wherever it is that you get your podcasts or right here on creativelive.com slash podcast. You can find Michelle's episode there to take on other journeys up into the Arctic, swimming with narwhals, uh, so many cool places we talked about on on that podcast but where can people follow you i'm on instagram a lot michelle valberg photography i'm on facebook my website is michellevalberg.com i'm trying to update that and everybody out there <laughs> now's the time to update your website which is not easy to do again finding the time we have it so uh important to always be updating and and making sure you uh you upload those new images and you keep everybody entertained and be consistent. And yeah, so I'm, I'm always on Instagram and I love to hear feedback. And if you challenge yourself and you go out there and you find something that you haven't photographed before or a way you haven't photographed before, I'd love to hear about it as well. So easy to find. And, um, and I just want to say happy Easter and happy Passover to everybody and stay safe and healthy and, uh, we'll come out of this the other side together and yeah, we'll do it and we'll be stronger and kinder, I think. Beautiful way to end. Um, thank you so much, Michelle. Everybody, thank you for tuning in and commenting. Uh, we're here on creativelive.com slash TV, our new CLTV channel that we just launched last week in order to go to the living rooms, homes, home studios, offices, kitchens of the creators around the world who are putting out incredible content uh, for all of you right now to, again, 
not just inspire, but also we all need some entertainment right now, some some virtual travel, like I said. And if there's anybody that you want to see here on Creative Live TV, if you're on creativelive.com slash TV, you can scroll down and we have a submit a suggestion form. So we would love to hear uh, who you want to have come on the channel, whether that's a performance um, or so many different types of things that we're doing. And if there's somewhere you want to travel, put it in the comments. If you're watching on Facebook, put it in the comments. If you want to go travel somewhere else, and I'll try to find somebody for you who can take you there virtually. Uh, so I'm going to sign off for now, but stay tuned. If you're if you're on our website, you can see, or on Facebook, you can see who's coming up next. Uh, and we have more to come. So thanks again, everyone. I'll see you next time.